Good morning, readers. Today is Friday, March 5th, and you're listening to First Chapter Fridays, presented by the Baker Free Library. My name is Juliana, and I am the library's youth services librarian. Welcome to this week's program. To skip this introduction, please jump ahead to the next segment. Every Friday, I'll be sharing the first chapter of a middle grade book with you. Middle grade books are designed for readers aged 8 to 12, but they can be enjoyed by readers of every age. We hope that this program will introduce you to authors and titles you've never read or considered before. If you like today's chapter, you can place a reserve on the featured book using the library's catalog or by calling the library at 224-7113. If you'd like something to do while you listen, head to the library's website, bowbakerfreelibrary.org. On the 4Kids page, listed under Events and Programs, you'll find a link to an active listening worksheet that you can download and print. While you're listening today, jot down any thoughts, questions, or ideas you have about the story. You can also draw, doodle, pick up your room, build with Legos, or work on a craft project while you listen. All right, let's jump into today's story. This month, our take-home creative kits explore the wild and wonderful world of bugs. So to kick things off, we'd like to share a classic children's title that features a clever and enterprising spider with a heart of gold. Today's featured book is Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Some pig. Humble. Radiant. These are the words strung high in the spider Charlotte's Web in a dusty corner of Zuckerman's barn. Charlotte's spider web tells of her feelings for a little pig named Wilbur, who was born the runt of his litter and simply wants a friend. They also express the love of the girl named Fern, who saved Wilbur's life when he was born. This Newbery Honor winning book is a story of protection and love, adventure and miracles, and features one of the most famous animal friendships in all of children's literature. Want to hear more of the story? Let's jump into the first chapter of Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. Chapter 1. Before Breakfast "'Where's Papa going with that axe?' said Fern to her mother, as they were setting the table for breakfast. "'Out to the hog house,' replied Mrs. Arable. "'Some pigs were born last night.' "'I don't see why he needs an axe,' continued Fern, who was only eight. "'Well,' said her mother, "'one of the pigs is a runt. It's very small and weak, and it will never amount to anything. So your father has decided to do away with it.' Do away with it, shrieked Fern. You mean kill it, just because it's smaller than the others? Mrs. Arable put a pitcher of cream on the table. Don't yell, Fern, she said. Your father is right. The pig would probably die anyway. Fern pushed a chair out of the way and ran outdoors. The grass was wet, and the earth smelled of springtime. Fern's sneakers were sopping by the time she caught up with her father. Please don't kill it, she sobbed. It's unfair. Mr. Arable stopped walking. Fern, he said gently, you will have to learn to control yourself. Control myself, yelled Fern. This is a matter of life and death, and you talk about controlling myself? Tears ran down her cheeks, and she took hold of the axe and tried to pull it out of her father's hand. Fern, said Mr. Arable, I know more about raising a litter of pigs than you do. A weakling makes trouble. Now run along. But it's unfair, cried Fern. The pig couldn't help being born small, could it? If I had been born very small at birth, would you have left me? Mr. Arable smiled. Certainly not, he said, looking down at his daughter with love. But this is different. A little girl is one thing. A little runty pig is another. I see no difference, replied Fern, still hanging on to the axe. This is the most terrible case of injustice I ever heard of. A queer look came over John Arable's face. He seemed almost ready to cry himself. All right, he said. You go back to the house and I will bring the runt when I come in. I'll let you start it on a bottle like a baby. Then you'll see what trouble a pig can be. When Mr. Arable returned to the house half an hour later, he carried a carton under his arm. Fern was upstairs changing her sneakers. The kitchen table was set for breakfast and the room smelled of coffee, bacon, damp plaster, and wood smoke from the stove. Put it on her chair, said Mrs. Arable. Mr. Arable set the carton down at Fern's place. 
Then he walked to the sink and washed his hands and dried them on the roller towel. Fern came slowly down the stairs. Her eyes were red from crying. As she approached her chair, the carton wobbled, and there was a scratching noise. Fern looked at her father. Then she lifted the lid of the carton. There, inside, looking up at her, was the newborn pig. It was a white one. The morning light shone through its ears, turning them pink. "'He's yours,' said Mr. Arable, "'saved from an untimely death, "'and may the good Lord forgive me for this foolishness.' Fern couldn't take her eyes off the tiny pig. Oh, she whispered, oh, look at him. He's absolutely perfect. She closed the carton carefully. First she kissed her father, then she kissed her mother. Then she opened the lid again, lifted the pig out, and held it against her cheek. At this moment her brother Avery came into the room. Avery was ten. He was heavily armed, an air rifle in one hand, a wooden dagger in the other. What's that? he demanded. What's Fern got? She's got a guest for breakfast, said Mrs. Arable. Wash your hands and face, Avery. Let's see it, said Avery, setting his gun down. You call that miserable thing a pig? That's a fine specimen of a pig. It's no bigger than a white rat. Wash up and eat your breakfast, Avery, said his mother. The school bus will be along in half an hour. Can I have a pig too, Pop? asked Avery. No, I only distribute pigs to early risers, said Mr. Arable. Fern was up at daylight, trying to rid the world of injustice. As a result, she now has a pig. A small one, to be sure, but nevertheless, a pig. It just shows what can happen if a person gets out of bed promptly. Let's eat. But Fern couldn't eat until her pig had had a drink of milk. Mrs. Arable found a baby's nursing bottle and a rubber nipple. She poured warm milk into the bottle, fitted the nipple over the top, and handed it to Fern. Give him his breakfast, she said. A minute later, Fern was seated on the floor in the corner of the kitchen with her infant between her knees, teaching it to suck from the bottle. The pig, though tiny, had a good appetite and caught on quickly. The school bus honked from the road. Run, commanded Mrs. Arable, taking the pig from Fern and slipping a donut into her hand. Avery grabbed his gun and another donut. The children ran out to the road and climbed into the bus. Fern took no notice of the others in the bus. She just sat and stared out the window thinking what a blissful world it was and how lucky she was to have entire charge of a pig. By the time the bus reached school, Fern had named her pet, selecting the most beautiful name she could think of. Its name is Wilbur, she whispered to herself. She was still thinking about the pig when the teacher said, Fern, what is the capital of Pennsylvania? Wilbur, replied Fern dreamily. The pupils giggled. Fern flushed. And that's the end of the first chapter, readers. If you'd like to hear more of the story and meet Wilbur's soon-to-be friend, Charlotte the Spider, call the library or visit bowbakerfreelibrary.org to reserve Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. If you like this story, you might enjoy some other classic children's books featuring insects. Try James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl, The Cricket in Times Square by George Selden, or The Miniature World of Marvin and James by Elise Broach. If, like me, you're unsure exactly how you feel about spiders, you might also like I'm Trying to Love Spiders, It Isn't Easy by Bethany Barton. Thank you for listening to this episode of First Chapter Fridays. Tune in again next week for another great story.